Hi, my name is Sam Hendrick and I'm from Bentley Systems, but you already knew that, right? Because you watched the prior six episodes in the series, right? Well, if you did, thank you so much. And if you didn't, go back and check them out. Well, in this one, which is the seventh and the final in the series, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about how to take our MicroStation file, 2D or 3D, export it out to Google Earth and some of the things we need to be aware of. Then we're going to take that same 3D file and we're going to be exporting it out to Luminar T. Now, Luminar T, as of update 10 in MicroStation Connect Edition, has been built into the software. Now, what this is going to allow me to do is take my MicroStation file, whether it was modeled in MicroStation or ORD or even if it came from Civil 3D, doesn't matter. We're going to be able to take that, export it out, and just in a matter of an hour or two, we're going to be able to add in traffic, people, plants, trees, put wind in the trees, clouds in the background, and then we're going to be able to create a movie just in a matter of an hour or two a high resolution video movie from your design file. This will be great to take to your client or your stakeholders and show them what it is that you're trying to design. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. In this video, we're going to be doing several things. The first thing we're going to do is open up a 2D file, and then we're going to be exporting that out to Google Earth. Second, we're going to open a 3D file, and we're going to be exporting that out to Google Earth. And thirdly, what we're going to do is we're going to take that same 3D file, we're going to add a reference file that has a mesh surface with a draped image on it, and we're going to be exporting that out to Luminar T. So let's get started. Let's do the 2D file first. So what we have is just a basic 2D file here in MicroStation. Now, in order for me to successfully export this out, a couple of things need to be set. Number one is your elements in your file have to be coordinate correct, horizontally, northing and easting. If they're not coordinate correct, then the next thing we're going to do is the geographic coordinate system. That won't help it. So we're going to be going to our workflow of drawing, which I'm already set in. We're going to be set to the tab of utilities and then there's a group called Geographic. We're going to click on an icon called Coordinate System. Now the Coordinate System dialog opens. This is a way for me to verify that I have what's called a Geographic Coordinate System assigned to my file. In this case, for name, it tells me I do, so I'm good. Now if I didn't have a Geographic Coordinate System assigned, I could go to this icon and I could assign one. And we have coordinate systems for the entire planet. I already have one, so I'm good to go. I'm going to close this dialog. The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be synchronizing with Google Earth. This is not technically required to export, but it is kind of handy to know how to do this. On the geographic group, there are additional icons. The icon we're interested in here, it's called Synchronize Google Earth View. Now I'm going to click on this icon, and what this is going to do is launch Google Earth. Now I have Google Earth Pro installed on my computer here, and I'm going to switch to that program. And here it is, and it wants me to download the latest, and I'm not going to be doing that. So I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it on the side here. What I want to do is have two side-by-side -side applications. So I'm going to go back to MicroStation, make it the active program, and then I'm going to make that half the screen. So now I've got these two apps side-by-side. -side. Now in MicroStation over here, I'm going to go back to my graphic, and I'm going to click on the icon, Synchronize Google Earth View right here. And what you're going to see in the Google Earth side is it's going to go right to this position in space. Now you're looking at the exact spot where the Vista point is going to be built. Now the next thing we're going to be doing is exporting out our 2D geometry to Google Earth. So we're going to be coming back to MicroStation, back to our geographic group, and there's an icon called Export Google Earth File. I'm going to go ahead and click on this icon. Now it's going to come up and ask me which folder do I want to put it in and what do I want to call it, a file name. And it's going to be creating a KMZ file. This is a Google Earth vector file format. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. It's going to create the file very quickly and it's going to put it into my Google Earth. So now what you're seeing here is the 2D geometry flattened out on top of my terrain in Google Earth. What this can be helpful in doing is approximating, is my design coordinate correct? Now, it's never going to line up perfectly with Google Earth, but I know that I'm not someplace out in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of the mountains someplace, unless that's where your project is. This is exporting out a 2D geometry, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So I'm going to go and show my side pane here, go to my places, and I'm going to remove this by deleting it, going and right-clicking and delete. 
I'm going to go back to MicroStation. First, I'll turn off my side pane. Give me more room. I'm going to go back to MicroStation. The next thing I'm going to do is open up a 3D file. So I'm going to go to File Open. And the file that I want to open up is called Vista Point. So here is my 3D model of this proposed Vista Point. As I rotate around, you can see this is a 3D model. It is also not only horizontally correct, but it is also vertically correct. It's altitude. Now we want to be exporting this file out into Google Earth. Now before we do this, again, we need to make sure that we have a geographic coordinate system. So the icons are still right up here. I'm going to go and click on the icon for geographic coordinate. It tells me I have a coordinate system, so I'm good. Then the next thing I need to do, because I am exporting out 3D elements, but they also have materials mapped to them. So I'm going to go up to my geographic group and there's an icon called Google Earth Settings. I'm going to click on this. On this dialog, you're going to see under general, when we exported out the 2D geometry, KML only for the format was fine, but this is 3D with materials mapped. So we're going to change this from KML only to KML Encolada. Now, one other thing we need to do that's very important because this is a 3D file, altitude mode. Now, my geometry, as I mentioned, is vertically correct. So I want to set the altitude mode to absolute. If you don't do this, if you have it set to something like relative to ground and the elevation of my asphalt is, let's say, 110 feet, it will come into Google Earth 110 feet off the surface of Google Earth. I'm going to use set this to absolute. I'm going to click OK. And just as we did before, we're going to go to the export Google Earth file. It's going to come up and ask me where and what I want to call the file. And we're just going to put it in our project directory and we're going to leave it the name of the file. Now processing this and what you're going to see is that appear over in Google Earth in a moment here as it processes the elements. Let's go ahead and move it around. And here's my 3D model in from MicroStation exported out to Google Earth so you can get an idea of what it is that you're looking at here. So that's exporting out 2D and exporting out 3D to Google Earth. It's not necessarily new in MicroStation. You were able to do this in other versions, but a lot of people weren't aware of this capability. So I wanted to show this to you. So we're going to be closing Google Earth, and I don't really care to keep this place saved. So when I close Google Earth, in this case, I'll just choose Discard. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to maximize MicroStation. Now we're going to be using the same 3D model to export out to Luminar T. Now before we do that, to add to the amount of project area that we're working with and for realism, there is a reference file attached. It's a mesh surface with an image draped onto it. So I'm going to turn on that reference file. So I'm going to go back to my Home tab. I'm going to go to my Primary Tools and choose Reference. And here's my reference file. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Close the reference file dialog box and we're going to be doing a fit view by doing a shift right click and a fit. And you can see here's my 3D model with a mesh reference file that has draped onto it imagery from Google Earth. So now we're going to be exporting this out to Luminar T. Now this is a 3D file, obviously. So we're going to be changing our workflow from drawing. We're going to be changing it to visualization. And my tab is set to home. And on the far right side, you're going to see Luminar T. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And when I do, it's going to process my file, exporting it out. And then it's going to open it in Luminar T. So let's go ahead and click on the icon. You'll see it begins the process of exporting out my MicroStation file, including my reference file. There it's launching Luminar T. And it's going to be processing the elements. And there it's exported out to Luminar T. Hey, I'm going to pause the video for a second because I want to show you where you can get some additional resources. What I'm going to show you here is just some basics. Play some trees, put some wind, add some clouds. No big deal. But I'm going to show you later a model that I created from this scene. It was about an hour and a half to do it. And then a movie I created from the scene. And I want you to know how to do this too. So. Down below are going to be some links to other YouTube videos on how to work with Luminar T. It's not complicated. I encourage you to go check them out. So back to our regular scheduled viewing. Now I'm going to go ahead and maximize Luminar T. And I'm going to move our project area 
in the center there. And what you see exported out is our mesh surface with the JPEG draped onto it and our 3D Vista area exported out. Now, LuminRT, the RT in LuminRT stands for real time. Now in the bottom right corner, you're gonna see five stars. Now this is a graphics card intense program. If you don't have a very fast graphics card, you don't have a lot of video RAM, this will operate slowly. I suggest you set the stars, this is level of detail, to one. You can still work and be able to do everything. What you won't see is dynamically the level of detail that you would get when you export out a movie. My graphics card has four gigabytes of video RAM. Some graphics cards can have up to 12. So if yours is powerful enough, you can leave it at five stars. I'm gonna leave mine at five stars. Now in the upper left is the menu bar. Now I'm just gonna to touch on some of the things that uh, we're gonna focus on for this. And now I'm gonna zoom in on our project area. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate our view around so we can see some of the realisms that's going to show up. Now, the first thing you're going to see is there are some clouds in the background, and you can see there are some mountains in the background. This adds to the sense of realism for your project. On the left, we're going to, the first thing we're going to look at here is going to be sun and atmosphere settings. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. You can see I have an option here at the top to set the time of day. So I can just slide the bar here, and I can dynamically change the time of day. There's also an option to change which way north is, the date, the season. Now the clouds in the background, this is being controlled by weather. Now I've set it right now to the middle of blue sky and overcast. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's make it a little bit more blue sky. You can see the clouds dynamically disappear. And then I have an option for clear or hazy. We're going to make it clear. It's a little bit bluer sky. And now the clouds, we have the option to change the direction of the clouds and also the speed of the clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and speed the clouds up so you can see this dynamically forming and moving along in the sky. We're going to go ahead and reduce that a bit. Now below this, we also have wind in the plants. Now we don't have any plants yet, but I'm going to show you that. And we're going to be able to adjust the wind in the plants for realism. We can add birds to our project here. Now, again, the stars in the bottom right corner, if I have it set to five stars, I will see the birds while I'm working. If I set it to one star, you won't see the birds. So I have it set to five. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the bar over for birds about halfway. And you can see there's birds showing up in my project. Now back to the left, I'm going to go and add in some trees. So I'm going to click here and it brings up a palette. Now the tree I want to add in here is going to be a date palm, but we have across the top a number of different plant types you can add in. This one I'm going to be doing, again, it's a date palm, and I'm going to be placing this multiple instances here. So I'm going to choose add multiple items, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and rotate around, and I'll place in a couple of palm trees right here. And we'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit more, and we'll place some of these palm trees over here. Now we can copy these if we wanted to, place in a lot of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape to cancel out what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna rotate around because I want you to see how the wind in the trees will work. So I'm gonna go back to my sun and atmosphere. I'm gonna come down here, there's a little bit of a breeze. I'm gonna slide this bar over about halfway you can see I get real wind blowing in the trees. This is something you couldn't have done in MicroStation itself. Now you're going to be able to do this with LuminRT. It's built right into the software. Now on the left, in addition to putting in plants, we also can put in and adjust the terrain. We can change the background. We can add water, ocean, things like that. We also can add people. We can add cars. We have miscellaneous items like buildings, bridges, things like that. We also can take snapshots for visualization if you have to do a PowerPoint. We also can create a movie, which I'll show you one that I did earlier. I already have completed this model. I spent about an hour and a half working on it, and I'm gonna show you that model. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that model, and that will close this one, and it's gonna ask me if I want to save what I'm doing. Now, when I choose the one I've already done, ask me if I want to save my current one, I'm just going to say no. And then it's going to open up and load the one that I completed. And now we're in the file. Now this, again, I worked probably about an hour and a half on this. You can see I added in people, I put in some cars. I also put in plants around there. And if I rotate around, you're going to see in the background, I also put in traffic in the background. So in about an hour and a half, I have this 3D 
model that I can work with. I can add in traffic. I can put in cars. Now, if I would have completed, more, had more geometry, I could have placed in the entire Vista area here. This is Luminar T, and I've also created a movie from this one. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the movie. So here it is. I created an AVI. It's only about 66 megs. Now the file that I'm looking at right now, that's 496 megs. So I'm going to open up the AVI. So here's a movie, an AVI, separate video file that you can share with your client. You can bring to a town hall meeting, show the stakeholders. So from the 2D elements that I showed you in the beginning to the 3D model, which were created from the 2D elements in this example, then exported out to Luminar T, all of this could have been done inside a day. In one day, I could have gone from 2D elements to a 3D movie ready to show to the client. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, the entire series here. Hopefully we'll see you in another series. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.